Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, really nice to see you. Really nice to see you. Um, what I want to look at in this next hour is actually a process of tools going from the Autodesk tools, AutoCAD, Revit, Max into uh, VR. So, introduce myself here. My name's Jeff, and um, I deal with a lot of visualization at Exotech. And um, I'm really welcome to see you. Just very briefly myself, I worked in the um, building industry before I came into, the, into CAD. Um, I've been telling everybody recently that I've been working in AutoCAD over 20 years, but now I've got to say over 30 uh, because I started in 86. But what I'm interested in is the uh, tool set that we're using to go from our AutoCAD, our Revit, our 3D Studio Max, our Interactive, so that we have a, an interior design visual. Now the interior design, the project I'm working with, is a real project I worked on with John Lewis. The idea is that they have a um, shop floor that they wanted to look into, into using VR, because obviously on the on, on, um, on the retail industry now, in the, in the um, high streets, they've got to rethink their, their work now. So the idea was that I wanted to get, they wanted to get a good idea of, of the visual space that was being used in the shop floor. So which meant not just getting rendered stills, but actually immersing themselves into the project so that they could look and understand certain aspects that really are not apparent when you look at uh, animations, pre-rendered animations, or indeed stills. For example, with the VR, immediately on this particular project you'll see in a moment is that they wanted to look at line of sight. So if they're actually in the, in the um, retail unit and they actually arrive at the door, you open the door, and if you, there were some columns in the way, if you can't see the desks that you want to go to or, or whatever, there would have been problems. So essentially that was my task. So what I wanted to look at then was the workflow. Some of them were saying with the workflow, what have we got? We've got the AEC tools, because it's a, a, a collection of tools now, uh, a lot of folks were saying, well, I don't really know what these do, if I'm perfectly honest. I've, I've got these tool sets now. But I'm saying, actually, that's a very good, it's a very good understanding that that's actually what they are. There are tool sets. I, as I mentioned, I used to be in the building industry. I was a joiner. And obviously, I had a tool set, a set of tools. So one tool didn't do everything. And as I quite like finding relative quotes, for certain aspects. One of the quotes that was very good is, if all you have is a hammer, all of your problems are a nail. And that sort of rings true a little bit. So what I wanted to do is look at that interior design VR workflow where a lot of people say, well, I've got, I've got AutoCAD, yeah, but I don't know anything else here. Or some people say, oh, I actually got Revit. Uh, but I don't know any of the others. And some people say, well, I'm, we've got some guys that understand a bit of Max, but I don't know what this is at the bottom, this 3D Studio Max Interactive. So what I want to do is to look at the relationship between that software and say it's not that difficult. These are run wonderful tool sets that we can use. So if I just pop over to this next slide here, just to explain that this particular project I worked on is real. It is a real project. So it's been cut down a little bit. But essentially, I've got an AutoCAD drawing. I've got the Revit model. And uh, we've got the 3D Studio Max scene. But we've also got the Revit Live. Now, the, the workflow people were saying to me, well, I, don't, I use AutoCAD, but I don't know Revit. Can I put my AutoCAD model into 3D Studio Max? And of course, you can do that. And if I have my Revit, can I put that into Revit Live? But when I have my Revit Live model, how do I enhance that? How do I enhance to make that more, you know, more, more well? 
Um, so I said, yes, of course, what we can do is, these, like I say, these are tools. They're all excellent tools in their own right, but pulled together, they make a, a rather wonderful tool set. And I quite like this idea now of not necessarily being a CAD operator or a, a Revit operator, but understanding this tool set. So this is why I, was, I wanted to come today with you for this on VR for the interior design. As I said, a, actually a real real project, so from CAD to Revit. I presume many of you already understand AutoCAD, whereas much design starts at 2D with AutoCAD. So what I wanted to do now, if I jump over to my Revit model, um, have we got Revit users here, by the way? Yeah, fabulous. So I better keep myself okay there. <laughs> so Revit here, you probably understand AutoCAD, but. If I jump over to the Revit model, can I? So if I start up my Revit model here, this shop floor here, this is a simple, this is that model I created or we worked on in, in Revit. Now, I'm not a huge aficionado on Revit, but what I do use, utilize a lot is Revit for interior design where we can actually create some geometry very quickly in Revit. For those that use Revit, they will realize this. So when I'm talking about Revit, I'm saying, okay, I'm, I'm only going to use Revit in its simplest forms. I've got you know, even colleagues in the room here that know Revit way more than I do. So... What I wanted to look at with Revit is to basically make some of the principal geometry, the floors, the walls, the ceilings. And in this case, there's some quite significant columns in this work. So the idea was that we create this shop front or the store exactly as it is. And as you can see, there's some quite big columns there. Those columns are 900 millimeters across. So the client is saying to me, this is going to be our shop floor. Unfortunately, it's on the ground floor of a 14-story building, and therefore there's some really meaty columns in the, in, the, in, the, in the shop itself. So I have to put them in there. So once again, I just used the geometry and bring that up into uh, Revit. So... I created, for those that know Revit, you'd understand that you can create some 3D views in Revit. The important thing to remember when you're creating 3D views in Revit is that when you export this out, we're going to export that into 3D Studio Max. When, when this goes out to 3D Studio Max, or indeed goes out to uh, Revit Live, it'll only export the scene that you export, or the view, sorry, that you want. So I've created a view called 3D Studio Max or 3DS Max import because that's where I want to bring it in. But there's a few areas also that I wanted to show you as well because I actually want this scene to be relatively optimised to use to move into 3D Studio Max. Have we got any 3D Studio Max users? Excellent, excellent. So. I quite like the tool set of 3D Studio Max, that's my world, but looking at the core geometry of the walls and the floors and the ceilings was a lot quicker in Revit because the client had that geometry in place. So what I wanted to do is look at some of this, some of the uh, geometry in here. For example, on the walls here, for those that use Revit, you understand families, the way the families are structured. But what I wanted to do is look at this basic wall structure here, um, whether it's part of the Revit model or whether I've modelled this particularly for export, is that I would look at this wall uh, family here. And if I just edited that type here and come in to edit the structure. For me, as a 3D Studio Max visualisation guy, I didn't really want to have a whole lot of information there for um, the structure of a wall, because as I'm doing an interior, all I want to see is the interior. So I don't want to have my Max model over too much geometry inside it and too many textures. 
So what I did, I actually created a family type, um, which obviously is a, a family basic wall, and I've just called it Visit Exterior. And within it, I've just made a structure, I've just called it Default Wall as a material, because I can change all the materials anyway, because the, Rev the Revit materials are a little bit uh, basic. <laughs> so I just create a, a structure called default wall. I did leave on there the uh, finish or the gypsum wallboard um, to leave it as a finish. And the reason why that is so that when I take it over into 3D Studio Max, 3D Studio Max sees that there's only two material IDs on here. For those that are using 3D Studio Max, you realize that the material IDs. So a little bit of preparation within uh, Revit will we'll bring those over. So I wanted to create that in, in Revit. Now, the idea was that we created the walls. I could do the same with the floors, if you like, and the curtain wall in, you know, they're simple as that. But, but essentially, that is uh, just the core of our geometry. There's, not, like I said, nothing too outrageous on there. So while I was working on... Um, this model in its simplest form, the guy said, actually, can I just look at this model now in VR? Because I'm really looking at uh, a line of sight. I want to see if I arrive at the front doors of my uh, retail unit, can I, can I actually see the returns desk? Can I actually see this desk that day? You know, this type of thing. So I said, well, of course we can do that. And for doing that, we can actually go into Revit Live. Has anybody come across Revit Live using Revit Live in your process? Fabulous. I, I think Revit Live, if I'm perfectly honest, I think Revit Live is actually an exceptional piece of kit, to be honest, because if you understand 3D Studio Max Interactive, if you're moving towards interactive, or indeed, is anybody using any of the other games engines like Unity or Unreal? of you using that as well, then that a lot of that geometry that we can create in Revit Live inherently can move into the games engine. So we've already got a lot of optimization done in Revit Live. So with Revit Live, for those who haven't perhaps used Revit Live, I can just click on Go Live here. It's really it's as simple as that. So I can just click Go Live here. And depending on your, your model, you will have the, um, the project, shop floor as it's called there, and it's asking me which view, which is the 3D Studio Max, and it's just relative to, to go. So actually in, in, in true Blue Peter style, I've actually got one I prepared earlier. So if I come over to my live here, this is the model, just, it's just that one click away. It's been, I've clicked, it's sent it to the cloud, it comes back. So this is just a simple Revit live model come back. So there's nothing, no changes in here at all. But it gives us something that's pretty useful, I'm finding, and that is that we can adjust ourselves around here. Or, you know, we can click and move around. So tap and go. Whoop. So we can tap and go around the scene. So the thing about Revit Live is that for a, for a moment, you see, we can tap and go and, and walk. But as I get close to the doors, it disappears. But that's fine. It's, it, that's not what it's about at the moment. If I want to animate those doors, which we will do in a second, I can take that up into, into interactive. So looking at the Revit Live here, I can actually look at that in the VR. So we can actually set that up as a VR and there we have the VR set up here. Now, we can, obviously I can move around in here and you can see some of the, the um, controllers here. I don't know if you can see the controllers there. Now, if I just disappear into my world of fantasy for a second, you may see 
just where's my other controller? Just a second. So I'm inside this inside the room here. So we get a really good idea of that. Anybody can have a look at this in a second if they wish to self. But I don't know if you can see this. If I'm turned the wrong way around, I apologize. And so I can look at this and also basically get dimensions, which is rather nice. Wish I'd had that when I was a chippy on site. So looking at dimensions and stuff like that. So in, in essence, that is Revit Live is rather good. That's rather good straight away. But as you can see, that with the Revit Live model, um, the, uh, the process is quite straightforward and very basic. So from while I was in that model, or you can look at the line of sight, this was one of the areas that was very important on this particular job, as you can see, line of sight there. And so with the uh, geometry, we can look at the go, the, the go live, and that's relatively straightforward. Has anybody done that? Have you done that with any of your Revit models? Just straightforward, click, go live. Wonderful, wonderful. It really works well. So. Um, if I just escape on that one for a second. If I come over to, may I switch to the other slides, please? <laughs> Excuse me, folks. So just to recap there, I was started with AutoCAD. AutoCAD is often used in visualization there. Like I said, I move up to Revit is used to model up the environment, importing the Revit project view that is made to suit the importation into Revit Live and 3D Studio Max. Then the Revit Live program that as we're just looking at here. So the idea of getting that geometry to that stage uh, is very quick. In fact, it's probably quicker to do it than I've just explained it. And so then, if I move over to 3D Studio Max, let this start up, 3D Studio Max here. The idea that I'd like us to move the model into 3D Studio Max, we will enhance the geometry that comes from Revit. We'll also create animation for components like the doors opening. So with, Re with 3D Studio Max, we've got a whole host of additional stuff we can do with it. You can indeed send um, your Revit model straight into interactive by converting it into an FBX. So for those that are using Revit and, and Max, you've probably heard of the FBX format. Um, but I personally prefer to use 3D Studio Max. The FBX export out of Revit, I don't, I don't think it works too well. And I'm, you know, there's me putting my hand up. It's not working very well. So what I wanted to look at was that in 3D Studio Max, we'll enhance the geometry in Max. We can also create animations in doors and things like that. So I'm going to just jump to this model in here. Just let open that up. May I ask you to jump over, please? Thank you. So here's the... Here's the geometry I've just brought over into 3D Studio Max. And straightforward geometry. But what I've done here is that I've brought that geometry over into 3D Studio Max. It's straightforward geometry there. And I really wanted to do some enhancements on here as well. So with 3D Studio Max, and for those that understand 3D Studio Max, 3D Studio Max is extensively used for this type of work. Um, the 3D Studio Max Interactive or Unity or, or um, Unreal Engine, they're game engines. Um, and a lot of people have said in VR, they said to me, yeah, it's a bit gamey though, I don't, I'm not interested in that. How is it going to help us? Well, just because that technology was developed by the games industry doesn't mean we can't use it here. And that's the important thing. So 
what I'm using here is some of the gaming technology to bring that geometry into here. So the, the first thing is to look at importing that in. If I just clicked on here at the moment and did an import here, I've already imported it anyway, but um, I'm just going to import, I'll show you the import options. If I come in here to show the, the import options on here, just so you can see that workflow. So, these, these are the import options that I would get in 3D Studio Max if I was bringing in a Revit file. A lot of people say, what about just the Revit flow? No problem at all, you can use the Revit flow. But because I want to enhance this in 3D Studio Max, it's more likely that I will actually bring the ge geometry into Max and I can change some of these default values. For example, first of all, I need to make sure that I bring in the right view that's coming from that Revit file. So obviously I'd created that view called Revit uh, 3D Studio Max import. That view itself... Uh, for those Revit users, all I did was switch off stuff that I don't need. If you wanted to in Revit, you could actually create several views of for the same project. For example, I, I did also create a separate view and turned everything off apart from the doors. And I did another one and turned everything off on just the walls so that we can bring in those separate components into our Macs in, in different, you know, in in a procedure as opposed to having it all in one lump. So with, with Revit, the important thing is to save the views. So in my uh, selected Revit, uh, Revit view, of course, I'm using Max, and there's a concept there called uh, combine entities. Do not combine entities. Well, I, I wouldn't want to combine any entities, and, and so because I can change that in Max. The, the thing I sometimes do not bring in is materials because for those that use Max and Revit, you'll sometimes you'll understand that the materials that in Revit aren't are sometimes they look a bit tiled if you're not careful. But we can change that. So we can either bring in or not bring in cameras. I can turn them off because you're creating a VR environment anyway. So you are the camera. So you don't necessarily need to bring any of those cameras in. In daylight systems, you don't have to do that because we've got that in Max. Lights, don't really need to bring them in unless you want to. If you've got some IES data in your Revit lights, you can bring those in and they will work. RPCs, if anybody's heard of them, there's real photographic content. That's the people. Um, I don't tend to bring them in. I don't know if you've done any VR when you've got these people in the scenes and it scares the hell out of you when you're moving around and suddenly you've got this person in front of you. It's, uh, it's a bit scary, so I bring, I leave it out. Have you done that? Yeah. <laughs> so, an export in BIM info. Now, the BIM info can be useful, actually, because when I'm exporting uh, that geometry, it exports it out essentially as an FBX. But if I want to keep the BIM info, which in 3D Studio Max terms is called metadata, I can then use that metadata within my um, software in 3D Studio Max and also 3D Studio Max Interactive. So as I was just pressing the, um, uh, the, the controller a moment ago to teleport myself around and make the measurements and stuff, we can actually use some relatively simple code to say, you know, what's the BIM info? So you can, you can be going around your room, your interior design, click, fire a door, and you can see it's BIM info. In fact, also, you can also click on there and then click on, onto that and save that out. So you can actually, as you're moving around your environment, you'll be able to extrapolate or extract information and go to a, a comma CSV file that you can use in your in your um, Excel. However, a lot of good stuff there. So if you don't export it in the first place, you wouldn't have it. Curve data, that's a relatively straightforward there. That's a slider, something you'd have to play with because of the things like curved columns. But the 3D Studio Max scene 
comes in like this. You'll notice that what I've actually done here, whilst I did import all of that geometry, I've just deleted some of the doors, and I've only left one of the front doors here. And um, there's just one of the front doors here. And um, if I just come into the perspective for a second, and just one of the fire doors here. The reason why is that I could actually just export those objects out or save those and put some animation in those. So with my 3D Studio Max come in, this geometry, if I come back to the wall geometry again now, what we can do is utilize 3D Studio Max's features to enhance that geometry. Because I'm talking about VR or an interior design, I actually would like to have some nicer materials. Certainly some nicer materials than, than Revit. Revit is obviously a great tool, but it isn't a visualization tool. So what I want to do is bring, what we needed to do on this particular project was to create some textures that were actually in 3D Studio Max that would be recognized by the game engine. So in other words, what I needed to do was create some nice textures. So I was thinking about actually introducing this into our, into our uh, uh, presentation today and then I thought yeah yeah let's do it because I think it'd be useful for those that are looking at using um, VR for interior design now when I look at the materials editor in here if anybody's familiar with Max it's a node based this is particular node based it's called the slate material editor so that if anybody's using things like Dynamo in Revit you've got a, a node based structure you offer you would be familiar with so what I have here at the top side here, or sorry, the bottom end here, this particular material here, this one, is actually the material that is coming from Revit. So it's a Revit which is, it recognised that there's two materials, two, what they call two IDs, because I changed that so that I just got one interior, one ex exterior material. So that's just brought those in. So then... On the insert in, in there, that's my materials. So what I did actually was I essentially deleted those materials or rather just deleted these. Delete those out of the way and then I bring in a DirectX shader. So when whilst we're in 3D Studio Max and we want to create our materials, we can use DirectX shaders, which is the same as the game industry uses. So we'll get a real, the real world reflections and refractions in our geometry. So for those that are already thinking about using 3D Studio Max and, or using it, then this is a really nice feature in here that these materials, I've got one called inner wall there, is utilizing the DirectX shaders. And you know, that's, that's a very, very good um, process here that there are some pre-made materials that are in interactive. So, for example, I'm using what they call DirectX Shader because for those that have got the AEC collection, you will actually have um, interactive, 3D Studio Max interactive as part of that suite. And, and so, therefore... I've made sure that I've got the interactive shaders in here as well. So essentially we've got some nice shaders in here, but also, like I said, I've got the materials so we can work on materials nicely in here. This particular project wasn't so much click and go, this was now to look at the visualization of that interior design. The first one when I used Revit Live was to get a concept of space and understanding, but now I want to move that up into a nicer environment. If I just come over to another file here, which is um, this one here, the doors, so that, that door that I add there, so essentially the doors that has come from Revit, I've done exactly the same. I just created some textures that will work in interactive, and then I've also created some animation. So we've created a little bit of animation for the doors to open and close there. 
A lot of people have worked that I've been working with have, have mentioned that within interactive, can I come up and can I open the door with a handle? Can I just pull the door open? Can I close the door? Yes, of course you can do that. But the novelty rather wears off a bit when you're actually presenting interior design in that people, when you're, when you're moving through the building, you want to actually get to the door, you want it just to open and go through because you're not, your world is not talking, you know, you're not opening doors, you're not running after aliens or something like this. You're actually looking at the concept of the interior design. So I made the animations in 3D Studio Max. So what we have there is essentially 3D Studio Max. And can I just jump over to my slides again? And so what we have is 3D Studio Max. Where, so in Max, um, we enhance that. Uh, let me just start up interactive on here. So in 3D Studio Max, as you can see, I've just got the basic geometry in, but I've also done textures and a little bit of animation for us here. And like I said, the textures are straightforward enough. If you know of a node-based working, that's, that's relatively straightforward. And that takes us up to jump into uh, interactive. So with a lot of that geometry now, We've got 3D Studio Max Interactive. Has anybody had a look at that? You've been using Max. Have you worked with Interactive? A little bit? Okay. What about other game engines? Unity? Anybody looks at Unity? Anything like that? No? No problem. There's some so lovely stuff out there. So what I've done here in 3D Studio Max Interactive, the, all of that geometry is taken on board so that when you actually see this in real time, this model is you can see the reflections, refractions, everything like this. So what I'd like to do is just open up in, um, in, my, in my 3D Studio Max, our interactive, I'll open up these two projects. Can I jump over again, please? Thank you very much indeed. So with 3D Studio Max Interactive, if anybody is using 3D Studio Max Interactive, this is the project manager that starts up with 3D Studio Max Interactive. So what I've done here is I've actually created two projects. One is, is this project for the uh, retail unit for John uh, Lewis's. Um, the other one is that shop floor unit I have just created a moment ago in Revit Live. So with that one, indeed, that particular one, if, if I open that one, essentially that is the Revit Live model that can be opened directly in Interactive. Now, a few people have said to me, oh, actually, that's quite useful now because I can start with my Interactive model and then from my Interactive just pull it further up into, into my um, presentation. So what I did with this model is I just created exactly... All I've, all I've added to the model is that, that desk there. So that if I wanted to start off in uh, Revit Live again, I could, I could actually come into here to start this in Revit Live. So, so if I come to the VR in here, I've got the same, same, same concept as we had a moment ago. So I've got the same in here. So I could actually then jump along here. Sorry. There's just not enough hands here. Anybody can have a look at this yourself in a second. I'm more than welcome. So we can teleport around here straight through again and you can see I put that desk in here so the desk can be used as well so I can actually well not that's it there so the the desk itself is just just uh, just been added into that so what I what we can do is even in our Revit live just bring that add that piece of geometry into there 
Now, a lot of people have said, do we actually need to make that geometry in the 3D Studio Max for that desk? No, you don't, actually. If you can, the desk itself was made, I just made it in Max, but you could have made it in Revit or you can make it in, in Inventor. And very often people that are used in Inventor also will export an FBX and then that can bring it into their live. That's why this is actually not just called Revit Live anymore. They just they call it Live, uh, not Revit Live, because we can actually import geometry from uh, more than one program. So let me just come back to this one here and come back to my project manager here. If I come back to the, the sort of finished project here, And if anybody will want to have a look around here, more than welcome in a second. So, oops, that's the. So this particular project is is that whole r retail unit, and what I've done there. We put a lot more furniture in there, a lot more fittings, furniture, and uh, shiny floors and stuff like this. So this becomes, you know, our interior design. It's that workflow from from uh, CAD through to this. The geometry itself, the assets were in Max or indeed Revit or indeed some of those. To be honest, some of those. Um, uh, contents there were, were SketchUp models as well that I exported as FBX. So we've got the same concept here where we can, um, I can look in here, make, let's have a look at this particular project in here. And this one as well. In the same. So this one obviously is a rather nicer uh, visual. Um, so, so I could use this to move around here. And like I said, come over to the doors. If I move towards the doors here, you can see the doors animate. I set the doors animating so we can move around. And also, if I come over to this desk here, and I don't know if you can see, but if I, I can pick up this teapot here and uh, put it down and move it around, no problem at all. So, you know, just to confirm that any 3D Studio Max demo needs a teapot in it, so I've just uh, qualified that, um, that little presentation. So. I'm actually going to ask anybody if they want to have a little play on this for two minutes before we move on. Does anybody want to have a look around my little scene here? Come on, come on, and stop this. You're in the front row here, mate. Come and have a look. There, I put you on the spot. Just. Dig my kids' spots. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Just there's that room there, and you can probably see. Thank you. Yeah. So to move, yeah. So all you got to do is press that, the top one there, to move around. But you'll stand on the desk if you like that. So point it at the floor, a little bit away from you in front. There, that's it. But the important thing I'm seeing here is that when we've created this model now, I've actually got what they call screen space reflections, etc. So the, obviously the, the the model itself is a lot nicer. I feel than the other models, and so as a as the outside now. <laughs> um, there we go. So a lot of the models here are are obviously pre-made. So you may have um, you may have a library of of models. Thank you very much indeed. Sorry to put you on the spot there, but that's the way it is. <laughs> Um, if anybody else wants to have a look, then they're more than welcome. So, this is the workflow I've been working with. Can I just jump back to the slides, please? 
So with the interactive, I, I would, in, inside interactive, I'd create collision. So things, how things collide with each other, that would be like the doors. So also I would create uh, things like animation within the, within the uh, Revit, uh, sorry, within, within interactive. So if, if you use interactive or you use any other games engine, for example, the animation of the doors is what they call a triggered animation. So when you move close to the door, when you move close to the door, you set up a trigger. And what happens to the trigger? The trigger plays an animation when you enter the, and then when you leave that space, it plays another animation, which is the close. So relatively straightforward. And people say to me, oh, haven't you got to do some scripting to do the doors opening and, uh, and lifting up the teapot and stuff like that? People, I've said, oh, wait a minute, it's actually quite a nice node-based little option here where you can set the triggers and play the animation and play the animation there. So I think that's uh, relatively straightforward. So we looked at that complete scene. So anybody else can have a go in a second, but I just wanted to, to which, which we're okay, we've done okay, um, look at this process or these phases. Now the 2D drawing, obviously AutoCAD, and that's used, we can send those AutoCAD drawings straight into the 3D, either using uh, Revit or 3D Studio Max. So in the AEC collection, we've got all those tools. So like I said, they are, it's important that we're looking at this as a tool set. The animation sequence is done in 3D Studio Max. We create movement and flow, both as organic and technical. So the doors opening is obviously a technical animation, but we could also do flow if you want, fountains and stuff like that, and other types of organic animation. You could do them in, in 3D Studio Max, or in Maya, or Cinema 4D, or whatever. And then the immersive experience, of course, is 3D Studio Max interactive. So, so you've got an immersive nature, you've got this spatial understanding and the coll collision and clearance and you gather the feel of the space. Now, I want to just let anybody else have a go on here at the moment, but I just want to say to you that the experience of using these tools is actually pretty vital now. Um, a lot of people have said to me when I, I do the training and they'll say to me, yeah, but I don't, I, I just, I'm just a Revit user. I don't use this and I don't use that. But I'm saying, actually, you, you want to think about these as a tool set now. A lot of people say, I'm a CAD draftsman. Oh, I don't, I don't use any 3D and so on. But I think in our essence, and I've been doing this for a few years, I think in essence, we just need to use the tools that are available. So I'm going to wind down and say to anybody if they want to have a look at this particular project. But before I go, um, and because we're working with technology, and because we're working with tools, and you've probably heard of this fella called Steve Jobs, and like I said earlier on, I quite like a good quote now and again. And he said, when he was with John Lasseter and developing Pixar, his, one of his quotes was that technology is nothing What's important is that you have faith in people and that they're basically good and smart. And if you give them tools, they will do wonderful things with them. For me, I look at the AEC collection and say, well, I, I used to do a lot of work with media and entertainment, but now I'm, I'm working more with AEC because that's where my world is. So I'm very keen on there. So last but not means, no means least. Are there, uh, any other tools that to add to your tool chest? I would like to add in. So if you're working with these tools, imaging tools, Photoshop, Substance Designer, has anybody heard of Substance Designer? It's a very good, um, it's a good imaging tool for a lot of procedural mapping and textures. I do a lot of twilight hours on this one, I'm afraid. Game engines of Unity and Unreal, as well as their interactive hardware. You need a, a good quality gaming card, uh, gaming quality card for your graphics. 
there's the HTC Vive, which I'm using here. This is the HTC Vive. You've got Oculus. But from our point of view, with uh, when I'm working in here, I'm setting up. At the moment, I set this up as just a stand-in room space. Um, that we can set it up as a, as a five meter five five meter space where you could walk around, and you can do that with the Vive. It's very difficult to do that with Oculus because it basically wants you to sit down in one place. So I'm using the Vive here. Sound, of course, you've got Audacity and Adobe Audition. Um, if you move into uh, the interactive, you can use a lot of sound as well. I haven't put a lot of sound on my interactive um, one here. Can I jump back over to the other screen, please? So in this scene here, anybody can have a look at this. I haven't introduced sound in here on this particular model, but we can do. And that would mean that if in this particular interior design of the shop floor for John Lewis's, this is not actually the, 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 the content they was using. They just wanted to line of sight. And they actually said to me, if I, can I have sound? If I walk in, open the door, can I have some sound over there? And when I move my head away, the sound disappears or, or, or becomes less. Of course you can. So we can have a source of sound. So if you've got TVs on the side and animated, then you can do that. So if anybody wants to have a look, I'm more than welcome to let them have a go. Do you want to have a go? Do you want to have a look in there? Just put the headset on and have a go. Does anybody want to have a go? Koshi. <laughs> Nobody want to have a go? Okay, no problem at all then. So can I switch back over? In that case then, I just want to say thank you very much for this presentation. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to give me a shout. If you want to know about the AEC collection, uh, talk to the fine folks at our Excitech desk and I had to ask them before is if all of this software is in the same collection, and it is, so you're more than welcome to uh, talk to them about that. And uh, there you go. Anybody got any questions on this workflow? Yes, sir. Yeah, when you're working on the project and you're producing the 3D model for vis visualization, yeah. Is there a need to use AutoCAD in the first place? Because no. you can produce a drawing straight from Revit. So e exactly, yeah, absolutely. Oh, if it was me, I'd used to use Revit and e produce yeah, a drawing absolutely. from that. I would, I, the only reason I mentioned AutoCAD here is because very often clients do not use Revit. They're saying, how do I get my 2D CAD up into the, the, into the process? So Revit is not necessary. It's just I'm saying there you can bring your Revit in, sorry, uh, your AutoCAD is not necessary, but you can use your CAD, obviously, into yep. Revit, as you know, yep. and or you can start in, in Revit. The only reason I use the CAD here is because the particular client doesn't use, didn't use Revit up until that point. So I produced a way to make it easier for them just to bring the AutoCAD drawing in as an overlay and bring up the walls based on that overlay. But as you, you are certainly correct, you don't right. actually need AutoCAD. Thanks. But there's a lot of people using AutoCAD. Yep. Yeah. Just a spin-off question, if you don't mind. You talked no about a line of sight in the building. Yes. How would you get around that issue with the, um, with the building you just had there, with the columns in the way? What, what techniques would you use to surpass that problem? Well, we, from the visualization point of view, I don't have the capacity to change the columns. Of course. Um, but all I can do is flag up an issue with the designer and say, well, actually, if you put that pair of doors there, two things, when you walk through that door, you're going to have a column in your way here, and you're not going to be able to see the desk that you want people to see. It's not actually a case of giving you the capacity to move a column. It's, it really is to do with the spatial awareness of what you've already got. I've seen this particular project where they've got the 2D drawings and the 3D model and didn't understand, well, not say understand, but didn't appreciate that line of sight was something that's quite fundamental within uh, VR. Yep. And, and for that alone, as I said, Revit Live, they said, well, this is just brilliant. This Revit Live is all I need. 
you know, I can now get line of sight on here. Because they, what they're doing is actually developing their retail outlets now to get more footfall, of course. So when you go in the door, you want to see exactly where you've got to go. And this particular one for John Lewis had all these columns in. So they, I said, well, let's have a... I developed a three-day, four-day training program for them, which I've just condensed into 40 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> no problem at all. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, just one question, really. Um, what do you think the limitations of 3D Max Interactive are in relation to more established games engines? 3D Studio Max Interactive, I quite like it because I'm talking, when I say entry level, it's probably not a good word to say entry level, but I quite like that as a starting point, you see, a starting point. I, I look at Unity as well. I, if I'm honest, I would say the next level up or the next stage would be Unity. However, it depends on what your client or what you want to get out of it now. Because if you've got Revit, Revit Live, sorry, and then you've got Interactive, it's quite a big jump. But then Unity is a big jump again. But Unity is not a VR engine, so to speak. As you know, it's a fully blown uh, games engine, but, this, but the node-based scripting in, in, in Unity is good, and there's a lot of assets already available. Just one follow-up then, uh, what about compatibility between Interactive and Unity? No problem at all, it's, it's if, you've just, if you've designed your project in Interactive, which I've done, I've actually taken this model into Unity as well anyway, because I've, I've, I actually done some more, more work in that model in Unity, I didn't bring it in here today because it's Unity, it's not the AEC collection, so that I actually got the character walking in front of me, so you've got, you've got a space, so your avatar, so to speak, is in front of you as you move around, so you've got that concept of size based on a human being walking around. Excellent, thank you. No problem at all. Yeah, hi. Um I just wondered, when, when the guy was clicking the button and he went outside, yeah. um, can you put like restrictions so... Yes, you can actually. The walls you can't go through, etc. Yeah, there would have been, I, I should have put the collision, there is collision detection on, on the collision on, on the model, yeah, where you won't go outside. But I just hadn't put it on there. All right. Sorry, to add to that is we do a lot of construction where, say you want to build a scaffold and you want to work out if you can get under a bridge or in an yeah. area, could you sort of work it so that you can crawl under or you can Oh, work? yeah, absolutely. You, yeah. you can put the trigger zones as well. So you could say that there's a zone here. I can have a box here in whether you do it in interactive or whether you do it in Unity or whatever, and you can create a box to, so that if you arrive at this particular point, you've got to crouch lower to get mm. under it um, and that type of thing. And so also you've got the condition, the, the um, bounding boxes as well. So yeah, exactly, it's all doable. Any more for any more? Yes. Hi there. I just want to ask, um, with Revit Live, you can obviously export um, a standalone version of the, the VR model. Yes. Can you do that from Max Interactive as well? Yes. Yes. So you can export this, you can deploy this f into whatever um, you want to. Uh, d -d 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 so you'd actually deploy the deploy, this deploy here. So you can, de oh, can you, can you switch it over for me, please? So in here, you can, I can, I can output this as Windows, just as Windows self-executable. Um, and of course, Android, iOS, PS4, PlayStation, and Xbox as well. Oh, the deployment. Yeah, actually, if I'm perfectly honest, this deploy the, the way to deploy this as a self-executable for Windows um, is very good. I quite like it. Um, I created a little game, my colleague will mention it, um, where we were running around a scene, moving bits and pieces around, and I just made it as a um, executable because they didn't have 
the software on here. But yeah, no problem at all. And I've also experimented with the iOS as well. Um, and for a colleague, they wanted to do presentation for their building, so I just created it for the iOS. So they had it on their, they had it on their tablet as well. Excellent. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, I see that you have the PS4 option, so I wouldn't need um, the HTC Vive. I could just go a model and then export it and put it into my PS4? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So that would be enough to have the PSVR and the PS4 to give the presentation that you just gave with the Yes, HTC of course. Vive. You can use the game engine, so to speak, to use it as a Windows, Android, or iOS. But clearly, if you want the VR side of it, you need some form of headset to, right. to drive it because if you if I just have that as an executable on Windows unless you've got your headset plugged in and running Steam you know the Steam plug-in have you heard of that that's the that's the game store right yeah well that's the, the game the VR engine is here this one here is the is the VR Steam Steam VR so this is the this is the connection between your scene and your and your headset. It's run by Steam. Both that and Oculus run the both the same thing. It's a gaming concept. Right. And and is there a significant loss uh, in in quality between the Windows export and the uh, PS4 export? No, 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 none at all. They're dependent on the display resolution of the of the receiving software. So I've, I've, I've actually set this one, I've sent this one to a PS4, Xbox, Windows, and iOS, and they're just, they're all as good as each other, to be honest. The, I, the um, Android was very quick, to be perfectly honest, on, on, a, on a Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, thank you. No problem at all. Excellent. Thank you very much then. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Absolute pleasure.